Hello, everyone. My name is Jameson Souza, and I want to welcome you to our first annual show by the Greater Fall River Partners for a Healthy Community. Today, what we have here is a great panel in front of us, and we are going to talk about the different initiatives that are going on in the Greater Fall River area with wellness and health. On my left over here, I have Dr. David Weed from Healthy City. How are you doing, Jameson? Thank you for joining me. Uh, right on the side of Dr. Weed is Wendy Garflip from United Neighbors and also the Chair of Partners for Healthy Community. Thanks for having me, Jameson. On my far right, I have Pat Bebo, and this is a long <laughs> title here, but it's the <laughs> UMass Extension <laughs> Nutrition Education Program. Very is that good. Correct? Yeah. Nice to so, be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And on the side of her is Masha Picard, who is the Wellness Coordinator for Partners for the City of Fall River. Thank you. Um, so, people out there might be wondering, what is Greater Fall River Partners for Healthy Community? And I, Wendy here is going to tell us a little bit about it. So, Wendy? So, Greater Fall River Partners for a Healthy Community is part of a network of organizations that include representatives from public, nonprofit, and private sectors to work together in our community to ensure the health and well-being of all our citizens. Our funding comes from community benefits money through the area hospitals, and that enables us to put in place initiatives that help the community be healthier and think more about how to get healthier and how to change our outlook towards health and well-being. Great. Um, how long has Partners been in existence? Well, the whole concept of community health network areas, the CHANA, you'll sometimes hear Partners referred to as CHANA 25, started in 1992 with an initiative from the Department of Public Health. So we work very closely with the Department of Public Health to make sure that the funding comes into our community and then Partners finds a way to utilize that funding to help everybody in the Greater Fall River area. So who, who makes up Greater Fall River Partners for so the community? Part it's a long time. Yes, we call it Partners. partners so. <laughs> so it is individuals that are from the private sector, from the public sector, nonprofit individuals, and from the Department of Health. We have an open meeting. We meet once a month, and anyone can join us. But the steering committee is comprised of individuals, everyone you see sitting here on the panel, as well as about another 19 uh, people from organizations that work for health and well-being in the city. Great. Thank you very much. Now, kind of going off to my right over here, and one of the individuals that works for Partners is Masha. So can you kind of tell us what you do um, through the City of Fall River? Absolutely. Um, four years ago, the City of Fall River was one of only three cities in the country to have been awarded a research grant from Tufts University that dealt with the prevention of childhood obesity. Uh, when that grant finished, uh, I, I, during the course of the grant, I was working with the elementary school principals and the physical education teachers. When that grant funding ended, uh, we were able, through the benefit of partners, to, um, to hire me as a uh, part-time person working with the school department. So I work with them, but not for them, but with their full blessing and support and cooperation. Um, I actually have an office at one of the uh, elementary schools and working with all things that have to do with wellness and fitness. So I work to help to support the school food services as well as the uh, physical education department. Last year the school department was good enough to allow me to meet on a monthly basis with the physical education teachers. Uh, the elementary school teachers and middle school teachers at this point have no department head. So they allowed me to meet with them on a monthly basis for professional development and also to work on standardizing a curriculum so that when a student at the Laterno School moved from there to the Sylvia School, he or she was not getting exactly the same material that they had just finished doing at the Laterno School. So it made it such, such that uh, what they're doing the same thing that they're trying to do within the academic classes, that everything is standardized school to school. Very positive move. So the school department has been very supportive of what we're doing in partners. What's some of the programs? I, I know you don't run programs but you try to bring community agencies and different um, departments together 
to run certain programs. Certainly Can you do. Certainly, and through the benefit of partners and the um, the people with whom we collaborate, we've been able to work with um, with many of the partners partners, as it were. Uh, to run family fitness nights. Pat Bebo has been a, a major part of that uh, as far as nutrition education is concerned at these nights. Uh, and as of this taping, we are planning a huge international walk to school day, we and the rest of the, the nation and beyond, um, where we have, uh, I'm thrilled to pieces this year to anticipate that, that there will be 100% of the elementary schools participating, approximately 4,500 students, which is phenomenal. Uh, there is a Massachusetts walk to school day that happens in the spring uh, that last year we had about 3,500 students walking, which again was wonderful. These are symbolic in a way of, of the, the, ne the necessity to get kids moving, uh, that whole emphasis on wellness and fitness. What we want to do obviously is not to just focus on those extraordinary events that happen that, uh, that might get that attention in the media, but more so to make this something that's happening on a more regular basis. Um, and one of the schools, Spencer Borden School, is doing an amazing job of not only doing that, those two walks during yeah. the course of a school year, um, and not just doing the one a month, which some of the schools in the Commonwealth do, or even the one a week that some more schools do, but they are one of the few, if not maybe perhaps the only school that walks three times a week to school in the morning. And, have a, and this is all being... Um, and that's what used to happen years ago. Well, this is what we did. We walked <laughs> uphill and downhill, right. uphill both I ways remember, in yeah, the snow. My, my grandparents telling me that. Barefoot, <laughs> barefoot. Yeah, barefoot, barefoot. We did that. Barefoot, 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 barefoot really, in, in the rain and the snow. snow. Uphill, back, the snow. Back, if a child is too. driven to school or comes by bus, can they still participate in the walking to school program? They can. Actually, Spencer Borden had a program that was happening during the um, recess periods where they were doing jumping jacks so that they still could participate in some way. And this year, the wonderful volunteer here, Heather Borges, who was organizing all of this, is going to start what she's calling a kitty boot camp. And that's going to be meeting on a <laughs> weekly basis, and it's all going to be, and you're going to love this, Pat, it's all going to be not just physical activity, but nutrition education. So, I mean, this is, this is what you want to happen, and Spencer Borden has been the prototype and, and right out there in the, in the forefront for getting these kind of initiatives going. Now, those, uh, you, you mentioned a little while ago the, the family nights. Yes. What is involved in those nights and who's, like, what's being, you know, what are the kids doing? What are the parents doing? Can this you kind of get into detail? This has been an extraordinary, again, collaboration between the um, PETS program uh, and partners. Uh, and the whole community, been. really. It, it really has the whole been. Community. It right. really has been. Um, when we were working with the Children in Balance grant, that was the grant from Tufts University, we were offered the opportunity to be uh, given additional monies to the initial grant, to the basic grant, if we were to come up with something that was a little bit unique and beyond the scope of what we were doing, but had been doing, but still had to do with wellness and fitness. So we put our heads together and came up with these family fun nights which we didn't advertise as fitness and workout nights because we thought nobody would come. Yeah. So we called them family <laughs> fitness nights. And it, they ran so incredibly smoothly, again, thanks to Pat and her team and the community. People came in as families. It was definitely a family night. They were divided into three groups based on colors on their name tags. They were um, given a very brief overview of what was going on that evening. And then on the count, uh, each one of the three groups would go to one of three different stations. One would go to a nutrition education uh, station where Pat's team would do cooking demonstrations, showing them how they could make, how healthy foods actually taste good. It's not good food and healthy foods. It's good foods, can be Absolutely. healthy at the same time. There was a second station that was a workout station where not just the children, but all the families, the, the grandma, m mom, dad, aunt, uncle, whomever, got up and worked out to music. And then the third station was a community resource station where we had lots of, of representatives from the community setting up um, resource tables to provide information. And we also were fortunate enough to get a farmer from a local farmer's market to come in with fresh produce. That was the only thing that cost that night, and that was an option, should they choose to buy tomatoes or not, that was their option. Then at the end of the evening, we brought everybody together and we um, had door prizes. We gave away 10 bags of healthy groceries. So, wow. And we had, I, I had principals asking us to come back even after the grant was over to mm -hmm. run this program again, which we'd done, but we wanted to get them more involved in the process, and they, and they are. But it was a great bringing together of the community. It was a great message in nutrition and fitness for the family, not just for children. A wonderful example of cooperation. So, and it was fun.
That's it was great. a family fun night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, now, Wendy, I, I know you're the chair of Partners, but you also you're the executive director of United Neighbors for uh, Fall River. So, with that, both of it kind of combined. Um, how, how do you wear those two hats and um, help out with partners and help the collaboration? Well, I think that being the executive director of United Neighbors really gives me a lot of help in working with partners. United Neighbors is a community collaboration agency. So what we're all about is connecting to people in the community, agencies in the community, and working to solve big problems in collaboration. So that's exactly what Partners does. We bring together varied people in the community, stakeholders, people from the community, people from nonprofits, people from the business world, and we look at our community and say, what can we do with this funding that we get from the Determination of Needs Fund through, through the Department of Public Health? And what can we do to help make our country healthier, our community healthier? So Masha has been working on the physical fitness aspect of things in the school, the nutrition aspects in the things. Pat has been working with Masha, but she's also been working in farmer's market. She's also been working in how we can get the message of healthy eating out there. And Dave will talk a little bit about his healthy city initiatives and the kind of things we're doing across the board. So I think that being a collaborator is really what gives me the gravitas to be able to sit in this committee. So um, besides who's sitting here, what other initiatives are we working on with partners? Sure. So I'm going to turn this to Pat to talk a little bit about some of the food things that we're doing through partners. Okay. I won't yeah, throw and, the ball And we need way. to mention our legislative breakfast because That's everybody right. in the community is invited yep. to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll Absolutely. mention that in a couple okay. of minutes. So you got that so. in a yeah. so. We're, um, so UMass Extension Nutrition Education Program has been working down in the Lower Southeast region for over 30 years, but specifically in Fall River for over nine years. And we're federally funded from SNAP-Ed and another appropriation for the federal government to provide education in a variety of settings. And um, so one of our settings are the schools. And our educators go in and teach a 12-lesson series partially it was a partially based on the Children in Balance project. We've evolved that over the last few years, and it looks close but different. And um, we also provide uh, outside agency support for in programming to their constituents. Uh, we're also collaborating with any other activity that comes up in the community around food that we can that fits into our criteria. So one of those collaborations were the farmers markets this year. And we had a wonderful initiative that uh, allowed us to go to the farms, visit some of the farms, and the local farmers allow people to get to know the local farmers a little bit through our, um, our news a newsletter that we did. And then we would use those farmers' goods to prepare a um, healthy, fresh, local fruit or vegetable recipe in season that people could taste. So wow. it was a real... Um, big opportunity for us to be out there and to have people uh, experience fresh local foods. In addition to that, um, all the farmers markets in Fall River accepted the SNAP benefits this year, which allowed us to work in coordination with those farmers markets. So that is great, telling people to, to buy local, to show all the different farms that are here. Um, we're going to take a break, but before we take a break, I want to talk about the legislative breakfast that uh, the partners is going to be hosting. And that's on October 21st from 8.30, oh, actually 8 o'clock, 8, 8. 8 o'clock. October 21st, 8 o'clock to 11.30 at Whites of Westport. And uh, the number, if you would like to attend, is 508-324-7933. Uh, hope to see you there. And we'll be back in a couple of minutes after this short break. Thank you. We all want to live in a healthy community one where people know one another and feel safe, one where the environment is clean, where there are good schools and good jobs, and where people know how to stay healthy. But healthy communities don't happen by themselves. People have to come together to make all of these things happen. Partners for a Healthier Community is one place where people are working to look at what needs to be improved to make the greater Fall River area a better place to live and work. We're looking at what needs to be improved in health care. We're looking at improving the choices that children have to grow up healthy and safe. 
we're looking at ways to reduce the use of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. And through the Healthy City Initiative, we're working on projects that specifically address the needs of the city of Fall River. Every year, we gather to connect with our leaders and recognize those who have helped to make our communities healthier. So wherever you live in the greater Fall River area, Partners is working for you and with you, solving problems, increasing resources, and improving the quality of our lives because how we live does make a difference. For more information about Partners, check out our webpage at gfrpartners.com. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we left a couple of minutes ago, and we were just talking briefly about the legislative breakfast held by Partners for a Healthy Community, and that's going to be held on October 21st at Whites of Westport from 8 o'clock to 11.30. And to talk a little bit more about it is Masha. So tell me a little bit about this breakfast. Sure. This is the 12th annual breakfast that's been co-sponsored for those 12 years by Greater Fall River Partners for a Healthier Community and Greater New Bedford Allies for Health and Wellness. That's the comparable Chana that Wendy was talking about. That's the comparable organization that serves the Greater New Bedford area. Uh, it's been a great relationship, especially in light of the fact that we're thinking more and more in terms of regionalism and, and all working toward the same goals with comparable challenges, concerns, assets, etc. Uh, the 12th annual. Um, every year we try to bring in a keynote speaker that has something to do with, um, that can very much relate to what it is we're doing in the area. Uh, and this year, and Pat will talk a little bit more about it, we decided to do something that was food related for a good reason that Pat will explain. Um, but we're calling the legislative <laughs> breakfast, uh, this is a preview coming up yes, attraction. Yeah, exactly. yes. We're calling the <laughs> breakfast food for thought. Um, accessible, affordable, sustainable, accountable, <laughs> that the food for thought is food for, the number four, okay. as opposed to F-O-R for uh, the thought. Um, and again, it's, it's going to be relating to issues that face everyone in the greater New Bedford area, basically, as Dave has very often pointed out, this is going to be a breakfast for anyone who eats. <laughs> anyone who, it's not just for... Well, I'm good with that. <laughs> well, it's, 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 I, I, I like, I like we'll put you right at the head table. Yes. How's that go? <laughs> so there is a charge for the, um, for the breakfast. It's $20 per person. Um, but with that, you're going to get a phenomenal speaker that, again, Pat will speak about. Uh, there's also the opportunity for anyone who, any organization or agency that would like to have a resource table to, uh, to share what it is they do with the community, that would be a possibility too. We actually had more than 30 people last year, 30 organizations last year that came in to set up oh, tables. That's remarkable. But Pat can certainly fill us in on the exciting guest speaker we've been able to and get. And it's a legislative breakfast, so that's we, we, true. we invite the legislators. Right, and we do know that there are some um, high profile officials that have already committed to coming. Right. So, uh, it, and we invite, this year we're inviting beyond what we call the usual suspects, the people that always come, uh, because we want people to be coming in from from the school department, we invite city councilors. We invite the, the two mayors from the mayors from either each one of the two cities is coming. Uh, help me here. Who Selectmen, else is invited? Selectmen, planning board, right? Health, all across, exactly. The health this department. year, exactly. you're going to be having people who provide school lunches yeah. uh, in yes, the Fall River School System. Yes, we have a commitment systems, from right? the Fall River School System to be there, which is right, which is wonderful. From the Rochester. Uh, town, town from of there's... Rochester, that they're going to send some people. This as is well wonderful, that and I know the this Somerset is school system is, is in, right. they interested in it. Definitely I, I, are. I know that just because I just know. <laughs> 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 I have an in. I have a slight in. But, um, but it will be representative of 14 communities in the Greater Fall River, Greater New Bedford area. So it's it's going to be a must see, must do, must be at. But Pat can tell so, you yeah, more. So now you've, I, I'm, You're like, primed and I want to go, know right? who so this the unique, prime Well, the is. unique thing about the legislative <laughs> breakfast is we've been talking about this. It is a legislative breakfast, but it's, it's an opportunity for the legislators to hear what we have going on in between the two areas. Uh, New Bedford and Fall River. Because the agencies and organizations already know. Exactly. <laughs> and so it gives us an opportunity to inform them of what the possibilities are and, uh, in their communities and what is already going on. Exciting um, uh, events and programs and projects that are going on in their communities. So what we did this year, um, there's something called the National Food Day. And um, a, an organization called Center for Science and the Public Interest uh, called for this food day to be developed 
to increase awareness, and I'm going to use this here, increase awareness uh, to reduce diet-related disease by promoting healthy food, supporting local farms, expanding access to fresh local foods, alleviating hunger, and curbing junk food marketing to children. We certainly can't do all of those, but we thought we could use it as a platform to, um, to alert people and educate people of, about these topics. So uh, the next thing we did was look, who could we have speak? And I heard a wonderful gentleman, his name is Tony Geraci. He um, is the former food service director for the Baltimore City Schools, which is a school district that has 82,000 children. Wow. And uh, close to 100% of those children receive free meals from the National School Meals Programs. So it's a very low income community. He created through collaborations with the community, through um, uh, business, uh, industry, uh, and public entities, uh, a school district that is not only profitable, a school food <coughs> program that is not only profitable, but also brings in fresh local foods to provide to the kids well, during the school meals. Well, that's a with the school districts is a lot of times <coughs> school districts lose money on right. their food service because of the free lunch program. Right. And he made it profitable because he, he expanded the school breakfast program. So there are ways to do it. But in addition to that, he, again, through collaborations, utilizing the political will of the community and the, con the community itself, he created a <coughs> farm uh, that is functioning and profitable that not only supports the school within their curriculum, but also provides food to the school meals program and sells food to local restaurants. So he created this whole web of a local food experience that these children in this district of these 82,000 children can now have access and experience what fresh locally grown food tastes like. So he will bring a message that's both um, unique and inspiring to the people who are attending. I can't wait. He's also on the National Advisory Board. He is also on the National Advisory Board for, for food, day. food Day. And so. he had an article in Gourmet Magazine. He so did. <laughs> if you're into food, this is the guy you want to hear. And, and that's a great segue because the person I want to talk to now has been trying to change uh, the way the city um, perceives itself and, and the health um, in, in the city. And you've been doing it for many, many years, and, and that's you, Dr. Weed. Uh, about this Healthy City initiative through the Partners for Healthy Community. Uh, Partners was one of the first organizations to really get on board with this. And we started in 2003 uh, with a citywide uh, assessment. Uh, many people in the community who are watching this may remember that we went around and asked people what they thought would make the community a healthier place to live and work. And we've spent the last seven years now really going after the kinds of things that Pat and Marsha and Wendy have talked about, all of which really do contribute to making this a healthier community. Uh, so if people want to know more about uh, what we've been up to, you can go to the healthycity.org website. Uh, we have over a thousand projects over the past seven years that people in the community have done to contribute to the health of the community. So if you look at those, you get a different picture of Fall River. You begin to understand that there is an investment here in helping people live, lead healthier lives. Can you talk about some of some of those different initiatives and some of those programs that you said over a thousand? So well, speaking let's, let's of a thousand, I was going to say what, one of them certainly <laughs> is the Fitness Challenge, which which uh, now will be going into its fifth year, uh, starting uh, the first Saturday in January. We have a warm up going on now, but we've had of uh, over a thousand people in several years and over 800 people every year. But that's an example of bringing resources together and inviting people in to learn about fitness and to change their diet, um, maybe quit smoking, any one of a number of things that they want to do uh, to make improvements in their health. Uh, but that's, that's a, probably one of the best known examples of the kinds of things that help make a healthier community. Um, Recently, too, we've looked into ways of making improvements in the work site. We know many people uh, spend a lot of their day at work, but don't necessarily consider that 
something that helps their health. Sometimes it's tough, <laughs> knowing Some, from experience. I was going to say, sometimes people feel that that's what really leads them to, have, to, to not having a healthy yeah. life. So we want to start by working with employers. We've just hired our, our first uh, worksite wellness coordinator, um, and uh, uh, Angela Bannister. She'll be starting this week, as a matter of fact. And uh, within a few months, uh, she'll be in touch with people throughout the community, uh, members of the Chamber of Commerce and other business, particularly small businesses that may have a harder time uh, helping their employers uh, find some of the resources that we're all talking about here. Well, because a lot, oh, excuse me one second. Well, because a lot of times the big corporations already have that wellness program already embedded into their a system. About a dozen organizations, larger organizations, uh, do have uh, uh, in, on-site worksite wellness. Uh, uh, Citizens Bank, Light Lear, to name a couple, uh, are already doing that. But if you only have six or eight or ten employees, it's much harder. But we think we can use the resources that we're all talking about here and make those accessible to folks uh, at the work site. And if an employer wants to get in contact with Angie, do we have an email for her yet? We have a, a new email that anybody can uh, use. It's worksitewellnessma, like Massachusetts, worksitewellnessma at gmail.com. Uh, so people can uh, email right, so you don't Angela. have to wait for Angela. That's right. You can contact if you're an employer and you would like to find out more about the Worksite Wellness Program, you can contact Angela at worksitewellnessma MA. at gmail.com. Right. Oh, that's great. Um, so, kind of talking now a little bit more about, we just talked about a few of the initiatives with Healthy City. Do you want to, well, let me give you another option. Do you want to highlight any more? Well, we have, we've we've had on. over the past uh, uh, summer uh, another year of community gardens. We've had 10 gardens this year. Um, by the time people are watching this, it's a little too late to start a garden. <laughs> However, people should be thinking about maybe uh, starting next year. Well, it's and, not too late uh, to think about the That's spring. right. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we'll probably have some programs uh, in March of next year. Uh, Nicole Fortier is our coordinator of community gardens, and she can uh, help people. Uh, if you go to the uh, uh, HealthyCityFallRiver.org website, you'll find information about community gardens right on the front page. Everything that we're talking about is listed there. Uh, so people who might want to start a garden can get in touch with Nicole. Um, we also have healthy dining in our restaurants, healthy neighborhood markets. Uh, and we're working uh, uh, throughout the community to develop other resources where, uh, like walking groups, uh, things that people can do. What we're trying to do is to encourage everyone to think about some way that they can make their life a little better uh, by so uh, making some healthier make choices. The choice, That's right. The resources here. And, and there are a the lot of choices point. to make. Right. You yeah. don't have to right. be someone that is choosing to go work out. Right. You, if you're interested in health, if you're interested in eating well, if you're interested in childhood obesity, if you're interested in kids getting more exercise, if you're interested in supporting local farmers, if you're interested in making sure that the food we eat is good food and healthy food and sustainable food, these are all the issues that Greater Fall River Partners deals with. So you can really find a way to attach from a variety of different directions that if you want to help change the health and well-being of what goes on in the Greater Fall River area, then we are the organization that is helping to make that happen. And, and let me just mention one other thing. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Julie Kelly works at uh, City Hall uh, on a program called Mass in Motion, and she's looking at helping to create better parks, better sidewalks, bicycle, bicycle, bicycle routes, routes throughout, throughout right, the community. Yeah, walking routes. And so she's leading us down uh, 10, 20 years from now in creating some of the structures that will help make having a healthier choice and easier choice. Leading us so, down the path, as it were. Right. We'd, we'd love to get to know you. So come to the legislative breakfast on October 21st, 8 a.m. Whites of Westport. You can call 508-324-7933 to arrange to uh, your reservation for the breakfast. And you get a chance to find out of the amazing work that is happening right here in your hometown. Thank you, Wendy, and thank you, Dr. Weed. Thank you, Pat, and thank you, Masha. Uh, for, for joining uh, joining me and joining everybody out there to explain what has been going on and how we are making our community a healthier community. Today we've highlighted several different things that are going on in the city of Fall River, 
But as we've mentioned before, Partners is Greater Fall River Partners for a healthy community. And through the, through the uh, next coming months, we will be highlighting different things that are going on, not only in the city of Fall River, but throughout our entire community. So once again, thank you very much for joining us and uh, be healthy. Thank you.